yeah well i think i think um jonathan and i would would, would share an awful lot i think one of the things i would point us to to start with is language um let us be honest the language of sustainability has become incredibly tired um and a lot of people are frustrated that initiatives that we take in areas like recycling or driving less and whatever feel a little bit uh like a series of silos in which we act uh, and we hope that something will happen uh, and uh, today as we spoke with our, our friends in in sydney you can get the sense that there's a degree of engagement you can get uh, but global problems just don't relate to people they can't do it humans are not good with global warming uh, we find that um, the biggest uh, impact we have uh, i'll give you an example the biggest impact of any exhibition we have at eden is uh, a, a whole wall which is taken up with if you shrunk the world to a village of a hundred people and what that does is suddenly issues which seemed too big for you to be able to consider are made in are made enormous you can see how many people are actually are computer literate or indeed literate how many uh, are of what age what ethnicity and so i mean a huge range of things and people just stand uh, in front of that wall just with their jaws slightly open uh, because if you look at eastbourne if i if i lived in eastbourne and i wanted to achieve what uh has been proposed i mean there are so many good ideas there and what will happen is you'll say, oh, look at this, look at that, the other. As an adult uh, talking to somebody, I will say, it's all very well, but who's going to pay for that? How can it be paid for? Who's going to look after it? Whose name is going to be where the buck stops? As an adult myself, having done something big, I realize that we need to turn Eastbourne into like Asterix's village. If you've ever seen any of those books, uh, you know, Asterix the Gaul, you see the whole of France is Gaul. And then there's this tiny spotlight on a village uh, where, you know, Asterix and Obelix and Vituperix and bacteria are all living their lives. And um, they, turn, they, they, they turn this into a place that is, is focused on. If you could measure Eastbourne, uh, what we're doing at Eden, for example, is we're turning it into spaceship eden where we've decided we're going to create a circular uh, a circular systems within our project the more extreme we've become the more engaged all our staff are and the more engaged our visitors are it is really strange it is like the smallness of the idea often kills it now the city i know that has most successfully turned itself around by miles is nantes in france and I would love to go with David and his crew and a whole bunch of people to Nantes, because this is a city that just 20 years ago was a byword for depressed. Industrial heartland destroyed, uh, very, very bad social um, uh, conditions. And a very inspirational guy called Jacques Soignon with a moustache of unbelievable proportions his, his 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 mustache came out like this and he adored young people and he put his trust in young people and he took over the parks and gardens of nantes a completely unimportant job completely unimportant it was not paid well or anything and he got all these young people to come and become apprentices and he then started to do acts of insurrection he got hold of all of the uh, best uh, uh, um, painters, uh, you know, but spray painters uh, in uh, Nantes. And he said, I want you to spray paint our historic landscape. I want you to spray paint our Victorian buildings. Only one deal that they must be water based. So it created this event where people were just concentrating and these guys were just doing incredible works of art. And then they washed them off and they photographed them. He then cut all the trees in the autumn when you pleach the palm uh, plane trees and he says don't don't compost any of it and he bound them together and he spray painted the tops of them and then he put them over bridges so i want you to imagine thousands of branches that are tied together then tied to bridges with orange across the top of the foliage so all the bridges looked as if they were on fire 
This then went onto magazines all over France as people said, there's a city with a bit of humor to it. We like this place. And then he got some cartoonists and some artists to do some not very expensive installations that made people talk, that made people laugh. And they put up benches all over the city of ridiculous benches. They were sometimes they were at an angle of 45 degrees or they were only six inches high. And he just got famous people and uh, the, the citizen would just be photographed on it. And he said, Nantes belongs to you. Nantes belongs to you. And then uh, he persuaded, uh, uh, there's a, 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 an amazing guy called Francois Le Billière who makes giant installations of mechanics. Uh, you may have seen them, these elephants that walk through cities um, and dragons that breathe fire. And they're just so funny. They cost millions. They cost millions. They're reassuringly expensive. But you know what money does? And this is one of the things most grown-ups just do not understand. And politicians don't understand this either. The world thinks that when you spend money, there is a coffer. Uh, there's a trunk in which gold bullion is. And that when you're going to spend X amount of money, you're going to take the bullion out of the thing. And now there's much less for everybody else. What they don't understand is that if you make beautiful things and people then want to come there, they then shop there. They buy things there. It creates a brand. It creates a brand. So I'll give you an example. Eden cost 140 million pounds. It is a ridiculous investment. Only an idiot of the worst kind, someone who's been put an axe in the head, would invest that sort of money on something that does not make the sort of profit that could repay it. What sort of fools would do this, eh? Now, having built it, what Cornwall has discovered to its utter astonishment is that people now want to come to Cornwall and stay there. Hotels have done themselves up, so they're really, really nice. There are dozens and dozens of restaurants that have sprung up, bookshops, other shops, because people are fed up with supermarkets and they want local. It is really interesting. In just 20 years, Eden has put two 0.2 billion, I repeat that, billion pounds into the Cornish economy. And this has been done not just because of Eden, it's because of the confidence that is created where we are in the wider thing for other people to go for their shots as well. And I think one of the things with uh, Eastbourne is that so many of the suggestions that have been made today, which are absolutely great, if you look at them and you look at you own Black Robin. You look at that amazing Corniche at Eastbourne. You look at some of the, the marshes. I think you underestimate fantastically how amazing those marshes are. We could collectively create almost a work of art that is actually about citizenship that links the east of Eastbourne to the west. You can imagine it, can't you? So that walking it and then walking the Jubilee Way becomes something a bit like the great walk uh, to Santiago de Compostela in, 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 in Spain, so that people come to do the walk because people have put up things of great humor, great beauty, words that make your heart sore or make you reflect on things. Embrace poetry, embrace art, embrace science. The kitchen garden idea is terrific. It's absolutely terrific, but it will only be terrific if it's done at a scale and with a commitment to its wonderfulness that actually makes people want to come. If it feels like it's a fundraiser and a tombola, then it won't. It needs to be big. So we need to be talking millions of pounds. But those millions of pounds are not millions of pounds that are going to be wasted. They're not. If we do this right, it creates a centre and a brand that will make the young people of Eastbourne want to stay in Eastbourne and not go somewhere else. It will create jobs, really proper jobs. And Eastbourne is beautifully located for that, beautifully located. I mean, the way the arms of, of the horseshoe of Eastbourne embrace that marvellous marsh, you've already got 1,200, 1,200 allotments the art of making the greatest kitchen garden in Europe as being the centerpiece um, of, of Eastbourne is actually pushing at an open door. You've already got the talent. You've got the skills. It's just, you know, I would suggest that, that, that David might put together a gang of people. And it's like we 
a good analogy would be let us imagine we've all walked into a wood and we find a cottage that's very broken down and we break in and there's some steps that lead into the attic of this little cottage and when we get into the top of that cottage we find a leather trunk and we then open that leather trunk and inside it unbelievably is Beethoven's unknown 10th symphony and on it, on it is a stick it note and you know what it says on that stick it note you may only play me once so get the best players in the world in the orchestra pit for this performance and I think it's that kind of pirate grin and spirit of let's rock uh, maybe that's a bad analogy with Beethoven but you know what I mean um, I think part of it is just about the spirit of a new age and I don't want to dwell on what's happening in America because actually when I go around schools in Britain I am so uplifted and looking at what your young people are doing in Eastbourne it, it's like the obvious is smacking us in the face this is a special generation of youngsters coming through and we the old farts have got to actually trust and let go of some of our power and see how we can facilitate rather than police the future and I think um, you know, we'll talk about it more during the day, but I, I think every single one of the ideas that has been put forward, um, strangely, feels like the movement of a symphony. They actually feel like all one idea, that if we carefully wove them together, you'd have a great, great idea. And I also think it's very fundable. If it can be woven to be coherent with well-being, with jobs, with um, a sense of belonging and purpose. Uh, I think there are many supporters we would get both in the public sector through government, but also through the big charitable funds, because it would be coherent. It wouldn't be let's have some money for this one Jubilee Way or 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 Langney Priory or uh, something else. I, I was hugely impressed. Sure, I'm talking a lot here, but I was hugely impressed when I met um, uh, Joe. Joe, is it from the Towner? Uh, th th talking about, uh, if you like, making the whole of Eastbourne a stage to get the best uh, of British landscape uh, ar landscape artists, because Britain actually is the world leader for, for landscape art, to come together in this place. And you've got all the skills here. I don't think you've got many gaps, if any. I'll shut up now. <laughs>